afternoon, TV and Bethy. Today I'm going to be reviewing the book Hungry by Crystal Wren. So this book was uh, pretty short. Tiffany let me borrow this a year or more ago? A long time ago. And I... This book was lovely. I, I really did enjoy it. Um, one of the things I have to tell you, first time I saw Crystal Wren was long before this book came out. Uh, back when I was in high school and I still loved looking at Vogue, um, I got a magazine where she was first featured in it, in the white swimsuit and the yellow and white mini dress, and it was the shape issue. And I kept thinking, good God, she is so gorgeous. And I feel like she's really the spokesperson for a plus size model, um, even though her story was very difficult in the beginning. When I read books, I tend to really hate reading the first few chapters where they talk about when they were born and their parents' background and all this crap, because I really don't care about that stuff. <laughs> so when Crystal moved, when she was very young, she was in high school at this point, and uh, she was 14. And a scout, a talent scout, I mean, she was her normal size at this point, a talent scout came in and said, you have what it takes to be a supermodel, you just need to drop the weight. So, for whatever reason, she's, she's a very straightforward person, she's very set in her goals. And that was her downfall, but uh, she decided, you know what? She didn't even think much, I mean, she was very intelligent, she didn't even think much about school. She was like, hey, um, I want to be a model, mom, can I do that? So she set her mind to it, and she ate practically nothing but lettuce and lemon with water and she obsessed over how many calories were in even water. I mean she just got that obsessive and did a workout video every night to the point where she had it memorized and she dropped down, she's five foot nine, she dropped down to a shocking 95 pounds and they still said that that was too big and she was skin and bones practically and it was just disgusting. I don't know how people can see that and think that's beauty. That is starvation and that is unhealthy and it's torturing yourself basically. I thought it was disgusting and this agency that she worked for was so obsessed over how skinny they wanted everyone to be and I really don't understand why Vogue models or runway models need to be that pencil thin. If you're naturally that way, that's fine. That, I mean, that is the way your body is shaped. But if you need to be demeaned by other people into thinking you need to be down to this size or thinner, then that is just fucking ridiculous. Pardon my language, but I am so against that. She had this obsessive kind of disorder. She had this addiction to exercising where she joined two gyms and she would work out hours upon hours a day. Um, and she joined two gyms because she didn't want other people thinking that she had a problem. At one point she was working out eight to nine hours a day at the gym. And you know, just she would get lightheaded and she would be so sore and she couldn't really function and she was just miserable and nobody would give her a job modeling because she had no personality. She was a zombie basically and she was a slave to her own body at this point. Eventually going through some trials and tribulations um, she went to work for this one uh, this one photo shoot and the photographer called her fat. She's she weighs nothing! She probably weighs five pounds soaking wet! And this guy called her fat. He was trying to sue the agency just because he was scamming to get money and all this crap. So she ended up saying, you know what? I've had enough with this crap. I, I can't take it anymore. Like, she had passed out a couple times on the street. Uh, she was... she just wasn't making any money. She didn't want to go home because she really wanted to make this work. So she finally decided to leave the agency and she got in contact with Ford and Ford apparently has a reputation for taking very good care of their models and telling them, you know what, um, you come first, jobs come second, that type of thing. So she got in with Ford and she said, you know, at this point where she's like this big, saying, I want to be a plus size model. And they're like, okay, 
take a couple months and get yourself back to health. Never ever says that she goes to a buffet and gorges on chicken wings or pizza or tasty cakes and junk like that. She's very health conscious and that's what I really love about her because just because you're a size 16 or an 18 or a 10 or whatever doesn't mean that you eat all the junk in the world. That's just mean that's what your body is naturally going to look like. And I really love that about her book, that she pointed that out. And she eventually said that a size 12 is what her body naturally decided to be. It just kind of stopped and was like, hey, I'm settled in, here I am. And she's fucking gorgeous. <laughs> she was a size 16 model for a while. So she did get a job. Um, in Teen Vogue and there's a story about her and she explained to them the struggle that she had been through and how she was covered in bruises because she was just so thin and she her hair was starting to fall out and all this and she was just a slave to trying to be the thinnest person in the room and it was just a terrible addiction and people started reading it and they decided I'm gonna put her in Vogue because plus size models don't get into Vogue. Sad but true. It was the first time she showed up in Vogue for that shape issue um, when I first saw her in that magazine. But I really love how she discussed other people and their bodies because everyone that she mentioned has a different shape, has a different style, but they're all beautiful and I think people need to remember that. The public's view of beauty has changed so much over the years. I think it's freaking time that we just accept people for who they are. Because a lot of people nowadays, when you look in the magazine and think, that person is gorgeous. Yeah, they've been photoshopped within an inch of their life. And it, you know, if we see people in the magazines talking about how they have cellulite, or how they have a double chin. That's just the way people's bodies are. You can't keep thinking we're some airbrushed gorgeous thing, like some Kim Kardashian, which I don't even believe is real. She's just engineered and it's just inserted with a terrible personality. Um, I actually thought that this book would kind of set me back in my healthful eating and trying to get fit and everything. It was actually um, really enlightening um, because for a long time, you know, I had always wanted to be pencil thin, like, and I don't know why, because I thought, you know what, I don't think I'm going to be happy if I'm pencil thin, you know. Um, but I would like to improve things about my body and that's something that I could do gradually and not obsess over. In order for you to take really good care of yourself, you know, you have to accept your body for what it is. And that took me a long time, but um, I finally realized it because, you know, looking at my relatives, they all have relatively the same body shape and I'm like, you know what? That's, it's going to look along those lines and I can't do anything about it and I could do something about it. I mean, I'm trying, but it's not, I'm never going to be the size of Kate Moss, not that I want to be, but you know, and I'm making adjustments and guidelines according to what my genetics are and according to what it possibly could look like, but I'm not obsessing over it. It's just, I would like to improve. I would like to get myself nice, fit and healthy and what happens happens. So I think everybody needs to look at that, you know? They can't they can't keep comparing themselves to other people because that is where the danger lies. You know, Tiffany, you were mentioning some challenges to do for vlogs and I really couldn't think of much. But I did come up with this idea, however. Uh, I was thinking that for, at least for me, if you want to do this, please feel free to use this idea. I was thinking that I would try to do some challenges with the vlogs that um, coincide with my resolutions for the year so that I'm sure that I will at least touch on every one. Um, so what I'm going to do is for January I'm going to or I'm going to have a theme for each month uh, with my vlog. So for January I want to focus on my healthy eating. I will have some kind of maybe a cooking vlog that will deal with more healthy eating like vegan recipes. So that was all for today. I will see you guys next week with a cooking vlog. Okay, bye.